Hey everybody, Sam here. And Angela, and welcome to our channel. Welcome back to the bedroom of our 1988 Palm Harbor single wide mobile home, where we are in the middle of a renovation. I think yeah. it's safe to say, yeah. Everything's been tore apart. Hopefully I would say we are on the top of it, and now we are getting ready to the slide down to oh, yeah. the easier parts. Oh yeah. We for sure get into some easy parts towards the end of this video, which brings us to installing drywall, but before we get to that part, we've got some more blocking and not fun work to do in the walls. Prep work. Let's go. In the bathroom on the other side of this wall, there is an old towel hook that got ripped off the wall. But it's at a really good height, so we're going to kind of fix it with some drywall, mud, whatever, whenever we do the bathroom. But this will give a sturdier something to hold on to for the future use. And we went ahead and added in some blocking for the shower and for above where the shower rod hits because it's not had anything to grip onto and it'll just fall down. So this will give it some more beefing up too. When they made these mobile homes many years ago, they did drywall around the shale, the whole outside. Well then they built the walls and put them up against the drywall. So you have a space that if you don't fix whenever you put drywall up against it, it's gonna like come in to the room some. In order to fix that, when you take out all the drywall, you have to make like a spacer before you put a block on the side for your new drywall to attach to. So I basically got some of our random drywall pieces and cut little slivers like this. So it'll be totally hidden. You're never going to see it in the new room, but it creates a spacer for my blocking to go on. So it's more square and not wonky looking. Oops. So I've already put this piece in here and now I can take a piece of plywood extra that we have, slide it up underneath it, and now I have a piece that is going to hold a space and act as blocking when I screw this together. Dang, you're smart. My brain works sometimes. Over here in my corner, I've been doing my nail plates or nailers or blocking a little bit differently. I just put a two by six here in place. I'm getting ready to attach it to this wall stud. That'll pull it up correct and tight and we still have the original drywall in place. So 
same kind of problem different solution this is how i'm doing mine and angela got the hard one because there's the tub shower combo over there anyway and the wiring so i took the easy one Right. Doing this to pull the 2x6 flush with the front face of the stud. We're also going to take the time to put some blocking here on the kitchen wall where our over the range microwave does mount. We got this little drywall anchor. I'm going to take this out completely. But we're going to put a two by four left to right fit, sitting on its face here and here. That way there's plenty of strength here on this wall. Should we ever upgrade or change things, we have good stuff to mount things to. Oh, that must have been the bolt at wall. Yeah. Cool. We have reached the point where we are ready to tell, inform, and include you guys on exactly what our plans are for this wall and that insulation. We have decided to actually keep this insulation. It is still totally good. It's not got the mold on it. It's not got rot around it, underneath it, or anything like that. So it is just older insulation, but still totally usable. Yep, there's no bugs nests in it. The discoloration is not water damage. I pulled it out, I looked. It's just, I don't know, it's dark. Older, discolored insulation. Yeah, tan lines. So we feel comfortable leaving it mm -hmm. and to create a water barrier, vapor barrier. <laughs> I hope it's not a water barrier, but yes, to create, vapor barrier. To create a vapor barrier, we are going to put up a sheet of plastic mm -hmm. on the inside and that will work as the vapor barrier. Well, that plastic vapor barrier went up very smoothly. Yeah, it wasn't bad at all. Piece of cake. We trimmed off the excess off the floor, and I went through with my razor blade and did little X's and cut the openings for the two outlets and the white, it looks like a tape blob. It's behind my head. That's for our mini split duct um, drain lines, compressor lines to go through the wall outside. So there we go. Vapor barrier is done. And I really think that the room is ready for drywall. Finally. You forget about all the little bitty things that has to be done. Oh, that's so true. And that's all the little bitty things we did today that mm -hmm. took up several hours. So to recap the things we did and overlay some nice footage of our cleaned up bedroom, we got all the tools and junk out of here. Um, Angela worked over here in the shower. She did the blocking next to where the shower meets the wall for the shower curtain, as well as a towel bar. And I also did blocking for the toilet paper roll holder. That's good. In case we get really aggressive and <laughs> well it's mainly the little boys have pulled it out in the past and so we're beefing that up a little bit yep we put blocking in the wall for the mini split and that is going to be really nice we have to worry about it falling down or anything as well and then over in the corner where our closet is being redone we did frame up that corner it's nothing amazing to show we just added in literally one piece of one by three but trimmed up and made everything good to install drywall and then coming on around the room, we added a little bit of blocking for our over the range microwave and didn't have much there. So again, beefing it up. Yeah. Oh yeah. And we did our corners. The Yes. 
the weird things. The that, creative yeah. corners. <laughs> so, all in all, that's a lot done and another box check that we mm -hmm. can move on. Definitely. I'm here in our bedroom again and today I'm going to start finally installing our drywall. For that, the process is really pretty basic. Uh, we prefer to install our drywall perpendicular to the wall studs, so that means we lay them down flat and have more horizontal joints. This is what we have found that works well for us, and given how our boys' bedroom renovation, drywall, and everything handled, held up, and withstood the move of the entire home, we're pretty confident in that style as well. We're going to be installing half inch drywall and contrary to what we have done in our kitchen, dining room, and boys bedroom, we are not installing the purple or green board that is moisture application rated. We were not able to find that currently. Apparently there is a shortage of that going on and our bedroom is not really an area where it's going to be wet. At least we hope not. So in that instance, we are deviating from what we normally do in our channel. However, this is more applicable and standard with other places or other people you may be seeing doing drywall in a non-wet environment. I'm going to be trying something new today. I'm going to be using a quote-unquote drywall bit. This is a little Phillips bit driver with this collar that only allows you to go so far before it bottoms out on the wall, the drywall wall. I've never used one of these before with installing drywall, but I'll give it a shot. Why not? Maybe it's going to be something really awesome and I will have wished I had always had it, or maybe it's just a gimmick. I'm not sure just yet. In addition to that, I will be using two other cool tools. One is for finding your outlet locations behind the wall, and the other is for cutting out the holes through the drywall for your outlets. But first, let's get some supplies together, get some stuff in this room, and then we'll see you guys there with the cool tools. All right guys, cool tool time. Tool number one is in this black case. This is called a Blind Mark XT. What this is, is a special set of magnets. You have three for your outlet boxes, one for the outside. And this allows you to line up and show you exactly where your boxes are without having to measure. You put this little guy in your outlet box with the arrow facing up. Then you put your drywall against the wall and you use this larger rectangle and it pops right into place. Showing you exactly where your outlet box is. You can then draw a line around the perimeter and then cut it to fit. So well, we have one outlet on this wall here. So I'm gonna use the one outlet tool part and then this rectangle and come over here and I'll show you how we put it in to use it. All right, here is our outlet box and here is the little magnet piece. It's got these little wires they kind of press you just line them up in the screw holes of your box and you push it in just like that. How cool is that? <laughs> yes, very cool. We bought the blind mark, I think, back whenever we were doing the boys' renovation. I think the boys' bedroom. I found it on Amazon. I thought, hmm, maybe it'll work. The reviews seem pretty good. Wow. Hands down, worth every penny ever spent for it. And it has been awesome to help us get, honestly, super quick drywall results without a lot of problem, a lot of math, and a lot of headache. We did buy the three outlet kit, so it might be a larger kit if I remember right. Either way, there'll be a link to it down below if you wanna check it out. But the three kit allows you to put up a piece of drywall and have up to three outlet boxes in place. So that is really cool. Now in the event you're working with a two gang outlet or a box that is rectangular and has you know two slots instead of one, you just put two of those little yellow things in there, good to go. All right, cool tool number two, and maybe three, is how I'm going to be cutting the holes in the drywall. Now you could absolutely take this, use an oscillating tool, use a utility knife, and cut it out. No problem, and we've done that up until now. What I have here is called a Q-bit. It is a saw that goes in our oscillating multi-tool that is rectangular, 
and will cut on four different sides at once. I've never used it. I don't know if it's a gimmick. I don't know if it's a genius invention, but we're about to find out. I have a single gang and a dual gang, so one and two slot. Both of these blades will fit in our oscillating tool. So let's load up the single. This is the Qubit SQ1000-S. Let's see if this thing works. All right, I'm gonna take out our generic blade out of our oscillating tool. And then we'll fit this guy in. So in theory, we're good to go ahead and use this thing. Let's see if it works. <laughs> well, that made quick work of it. All right, I think all in all, that was nice. Uh, one thing I did notice, and I went and grabbed another electrical box because I was curious. I was curious at the size of my electrical boxes versus the size of the Qubit saw. They are pretty much dead on. The same size all around. So you've got to be dead on on your placement for it to just slide right in there easy peasy. Whenever you take the blind mark tool and hold it up, it is also the same exact size. So you've got to get the magnets lined up to the box perfectly, mark them, and then get the tool lined up to your marks perfectly and mark those as well. So again, maybe it's just us. Maybe I'm not the greatest, most precise, but what I've found that I need to do, even after using the Qubit, is hold it in a place and you'll see one of the sides doesn't line up perfectly with the drywall and the hole. So then I take my oscillating tool with a regular blade and just kind of shave it on one or two sides just to get it to fit. Regardless, the blind mark tool, hands down worth it. That is so much easier than measuring and transferring your measurements and then did I get it right? It's just perfect. This is more relative dimensioning where you use real life objects to find locations or sizes. The Qubit, I still like. It is still very quick, gives you very nice rectangular cuts, is relatively low dust. I mean, none of this is no dust, but relatively low. But probably the number one thing I like about this tool versus utility knife is safety. The chances of you cutting your fingers off with this tool are less than using a utility blade and constantly going back and forth over and over and over, scoring it to finally cut through. So in that sense, from a safety standpoint, this is still well worth it. Even though you have to sneak up onto your cuts, still well worth it. All right, tool talk out of the way. No doubt you're wondering, Sam, what are you doing? You hiding your window? No, I decided to go ahead and install my panel, put it in place. What I'm going to do now is take my tape measure, drop it down behind the drawwall to on top of the seal plate or the board, whatever, the framing member that's below the window. Get my measurement, transfer it on the front, make a mark, do that left and right, draw a line, and then give myself a line here to cut out in place. I figured that's going to be easier for me so that I'm not dealing with the small little sliver that would have been left over there. I don't run the risk of breaking it. And again, this is more relative dimensioning. The stuff where you use the piece in where it's going to be installed to make marks and cut it to fit. At this point, it's really just a matter of rinse and repeat on the parts where I have outlet boxes. Put the blind mark tool in, hold my panel in place, mark it, cut it, trim it to fit, and then install it. I'm gonna go ahead and sit you guys over here in the corner so I can just start working and I'll see you guys where we have some progress made.
pouring now. Going to be anywhere. I, I saw the pony over there running like crazy. I would too. Ah. Yikes. Okay, so this front wall is done, just about. I need to clean off my step stool and finish the screws all along the ceiling, but I'll probably wait until probably the end to do that because the step stool is my workbench right now. I'm gonna go ahead and continue to one of these walls. I don't know which one yet. I have our generator running and our camper and a really long series of 12 gauge drop cords feeding a box fan and a work light. So the fun can continue. Even though we're getting a ton of rain outside, we're staying dry and dusty inside.
Well, as you guys can see, it is looking more like a livable space in here. Woohoo! <laughs> At least on this wall, not so much over there. Well, if but... you cover that up, we're right. good. <laughs> so, you, uh, we're not here for today for the drywall work. So, what are your thoughts of walking in here and seeing this? It's pretty amazing. It totally is looking like a bedroom and not a construction site. So, it is nice to have the, the more finished things on the walls. You know, it still mm -hmm. looks like a construction site, I guess, but it's like, oh, the walls are eventually going to be whitish. They are kind of whitish now. That's nice. There's not, you know, studs sticking out every so often and right or insulation the, poking exactly, out. Exactly, exactly. So the blind mark tool, as you guys saw, is hands down the best tool to get for this kind of install. Unless you're just a magician or I don't know, love the roto zip tools where you like cut and trace the outlet box. I don't know. For us, the blind mark tool has been great. We use it in the boys' room, we've used it here, and I still 100% enjoy it and will keep using it. And then the new Q1 oscillating tool cutter thingamajig, that was really cool to use. It worked really well. You didn't get to see it. I didn't this time. You'll have to watch the video and see it, but it was very cool. Um, it does produce a lot of dust, but well, everything it's does in here. Right. Yeah. It's a lot, for me, it's a lot safer because I'm not using a razor blade to cut, 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 and hopefully don't cut myself. It's just buzz, hold your breath, or put a box fan in the window, which we always do here. Both of those tools are made in the USA, so they're ones that I would endorse. Not that I'm being paid to endorse anything, but Sam will give you his stamp of approval. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, we try to support US stuff as much as we can, so there you US, go. We support US stuff. <laughs> Supporters of U.S. stuff. Uh, everybody knows what you mean. I'm just picking. You like to pick. Well, that's going to be it for this video. We obviously have more drywall work to do. Maybe next time I'll twist Angela's arm and get her in here for the more fun angular cuts around the ceiling and stuff. And then, of course, we still have our project creep. We have not started to creep on our project creep just yet. We want to get a good part of this part done before we project creep. Yeah, that, yeah, that's a good point. Well, guys, thanks for coming along with us as we got moving along again on our bedroom, getting the walls prepped and sort of done. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on the homestead. See you guys. Bye. Hold on. <laughs> What's that? You don't like it up high enough? It makes it look like you have a five head. How about a 12 head? Whoa. We're going to be attaching the drywall to our wall studs using drywall screws, inch and five eighths length and length. Easy, slide down to easy parts. For attaching the drywall to the wall, drywall wall. By fur, by fur, man. But first, let me get some supplies together. Let's get some stuff in this room and then we'll shoe, shoe you guys. We're going to shoe. Handy, handy. Handy dandy. Well, uh, you'd not work in. Uh, man. Yeah, that's all. Ah! What? A, how? Why is. That one? Ooh, haunted house. <laughs>